Basement walls are often a source of leaks in older homes and buildings, especially if they were constructed of masonry or stone and lack proper drainage. The buildup of hydrostatic pressure around the foundation drives water to the interior through cracks and gaps in those sensitive mortar joints and can cause a bunch of other problems like efflorescence and spalling. In this video, we'll discuss effective waterproofing and drainage strategies to keep your old basement dry, comfortable, and durable. If we're trying to waterproof an existing mass masonry foundation wall, the first strategy that we can use is to address waterproofing and drainage on the exterior. Now, this isn't always possible, but it's the best solution to addressing moisture in an existing mass wall. Drainage is our number one priority, followed by water control strategies to avoid concentrations of storm water. So addressing waterproofing and drainage on the exterior is the most reliable strategy since we're getting rid of that water before it has a chance to do damage or get into the framed wall assemblies. To waterproof the exterior walls, we need to excavate around the foundation to actually access the below grade masonry walls and footings. In this detail, you can see that we have our mass masonry walls here, and we're calling out a new fluid applied waterproofing. Sometimes if the masonry wall is in bad shape, we need to apply a layer of parging over the masonry to cover any large gaps and voids prior to applying the waterproofing, since the membrane can't bridge over those larger gaps and cracks. We're installing this waterproofing membrane over the masonry to provide a hydrophobic surface to prevent liquid water from from wicking inside, and vapor as well from the damp soils. Now, waterproofing is a good start, but it can only get you so far. After we've applied our waterproofing membrane, we need to actually drain the water around the foundation, which is why we're calling out a new perimeter drainage tile set in a crushed stone bed and wrapped with filter fabric. So this is just a standard perimeter drain that you would see in most new construction, and it ensures that we're draining all the water that finds a path around the foundation and the footings away to daylight so that it doesn't build up around the footings and wick inside as easily. So this is critical to keeping the foundation and basement dry. We also want to install a dimple mat against the waterproofed masonry walls and down over the perimeter drain. Now you might be asking, what does this dimple mat do? The dimple mat prevents the buildup of hydrostatic pressure against the waterproofing and the masonry walls that could drive water into the masonry. So if water was to build up around the foundation walls, this provides a pressure relief function, allowing any water that happens to get behind there to drain harmlessly down the surface of the waterproofing, down to the perimeter drainage tile instead of being held in tension. Then we want to make sure that we're backfilling with a free draining backfill material. This basically allows any water that gets near the foundation to percolate and easily drain down to the foundation drainage tile, limiting the amount of hydrostatic pressure that's exerted on the foundation walls. And then we want to cap this with either semi-impervious concrete pavers or an impermeable native soil cap, and this just gives any surface water a chance to drain away from the foundation before becoming subsurface water, and the free draining backfill below is there to quickly drain any water that finds its way near the foundation. But we want to get that water away from the foundation and masonry walls before it has a chance to collect. Then on the interior side of the masonry foundation walls, we may want to excavate a small portion around the existing slab to install a secondary interior drainage tile that gets discharged to a couple of sump pumps with backup batteries, and that allows any water that may collect around the footings or the basement slab to drain out whether it's from groundwater rise or from a high water table. This is especially important if we're insulating and finishing the basement. The drainage tile is set in a crushed stone bed and wrapped in a filter fabric, and then we want to install a dimple mat or a drainage mat right here at the joint between the slab and the masonry wall, lapping it over the interior drainage tile. So any water that might wick up through the masonry wall can't bridge into the slab or collect above the slab around the interior framing and sill plate, and we'll have a path to drain out. If we're smart about how we're draining the water, we don't have to worry as much about the water wicking up through the footing. Then we want to patch the concrete slab that we've excavated, and then we're coating the slab in a fluid applied epoxy vapor barrier. And that just prevents soil gases, vapor, and liquid water from migrating into the basement and affecting the more moisture sensitive materials above and raising interior humidity levels, since plastic vapor barriers weren't installed in these old buildings. And then if we want to insulate, we can install rigid insulation above, two layers of subflooring with staggered and offset joints, an approved underlayment, and then our flooring material. For the masonry basement walls, we can either insulate them or leave them uninsulated and exposed, but in many cases, if we're going to the trouble of waterproofing everything, we generally are insulating these below grade walls. Here in this detail, we're using a combination of Rockwool Comfort Bat and Rockwool Comfort Board as a thermal break. And then we're specifying a taped smart vapor retarder membrane as our air and vapor barrier. And that will allow moisture to dry out of the masonry walls to the interior, but prevent moisture from diffusing outwards and condensing on the cool masonry wall. So that smart vapor retarder is the key to this assembly since we're not using rigid foam or spray foam. We could also specify rigid foam with taped joints instead. However, keep in mind that we may get moisture that gets trapped behind there. 
This is another diagram of a section through a stone rubble foundation wall and how it can be waterproofed. As you can see, it looks very similar to the mass masonry foundation. The only difference here is that we're applying a parge coat to the surface of that rough rubble foundation wall, and that parge coat prevents water from leaking in through cracks and gaps because that waterproofing membrane can't effectively bridge over those larger gaps and voids, so we really need that parge coat to provide a uniform surface for the waterproofing, whether we're using a fluid applied coating or a sheet membrane. Other than that, the waterproofing and drainage strategy is essentially identical to the mass masonry wall in the previous detail. We're still calling out a continuous dimple mat to prevent the buildup of hydrostatic pressure against those rubble foundation walls that are prone to water leakage, and we're still calling out for the installation of a new perimeter drain tile set in a crushed stone bed and wrapped with filter fabric and drained to daylight. Most importantly, we want to make sure that we're sloping the grade away from the stone foundation because we don't want to concentrate water anywhere around here. Now, in terms of the fluid applied waterproofing that we've called out here, Tremco makes a reliable below grade waterproofing called Tremco 20160, which is a modified polyurethane based product, but you could also use a standard modified asphalt emulsion like Tremproof 260. Not sponsored by Tremco, but I just happen to like these products. I'll put links to them in the description below. Alternatively, the parge coat could serve as your waterproofing depending on the product that you select, but you still need that dimple mat layer to prevent hydrostatic pressure. Now, if you can't excavate to access the exterior foundation walls to install a new waterproofing layer and provide drainage, you can address water and drainage on the interior. So if we zoom into this detail, you can see that we have a taped dimple mat membrane here installed directly against the interior side of the mass masonry foundation walls. So this taped dimple mat provides a drainage space and a capillary break behind the masonry walls, and we're terminating it over a new interior drainage tile that's set in a crushed stone bed and wrapped with filter fabric. The drainage tile gets discharged to a couple of sump pumps with backup batteries, and we're relying on the system to drain out any water that leaks through cracks and gaps in those masonry foundation walls. So the dimple mat is providing a drainage plane and a capillary break, and it serves as our waterproofing when the seams are taped. And it's also serving as a vapor barrier. Now, this function as a vapor barrier is actually beneficial if we're letting water pass through, because we can get efflorescence on the interior of these masonry walls if water is allowed to evaporate. And what can happen is that this can actually start to damage the masonry walls over time. Water passing through the walls carries dissolved salts, whether it's drying it out of the mortars or from the minerals in the adjacent soils, and then the water dries the interior through evaporation, leaving behind the salts in concentrated deposits. Then water flowing through the walls wants to rush to dilute those salt deposits, bringing with it even more salts after it evaporates, and we get these large salt concentrations which we see as efflorescence, which is that chalky white substance that you will sometimes see on old masonry and stone buildings, and even on concrete basement walls. Now if too much salt is allowed to build up on and inside the masonry, which is called subfluorescence, we actually build up a lot of osmotic pressures because water wants to rush to dilute it, and those osmotic pressures can actually exert a lot of force onto the brick and masonry, which means that we start to get spalling where pieces of the salt-laden brick and mortar fall off, which can easily turn into a structural issue. So by providing this dimple mat, which is an incidental vapor barrier, we are preventing evaporation, but we're promoting drainage, so relative humidity remains around 100% in this gap here, preventing drying, and therefore preventing efflorescence and spalling. So it's okay if our masonry walls get wet as long as that water can drain out and then we don't get the efflorescence or spalling that could actually damage the wall so this is a big deal then we patch the concrete slab that we partially excavated to install the drainage tile and install a fluid applied epoxy vapor barrier across the entire slab to prevent liquid water and vapor from migrating inside as well as radon and then we're free to insulate the walls in whatever way we want. In this particular detail, we're calling out closed cell polyurethane spray foam as it has a high R value per inch and provides the benefits of an air barrier, vapor retarder, preventing condensation on the surface of the dimple mat. We're also installing some mineral wool bat insulation between the two x four framing for some additional thermal resistance. But the point is that the dimple mat allows for a lot more flexibility in the design and the type of insulation that we can specify. And then we have our standard gypsum board or other interior finishes. You can find more details details about this solution in my most recent book, A Guide to Moisture Management for Residential Remodels, where we discuss a wide range of solutions that work for a lot of different building conditions, including old basement and foundation walls like these, old wood framing, above grade masonry, crawl spaces and slabs, roofs, windows, and much more. Link to the ebook will be in the description below. Now, on the exterior, we want to correct the grating so that it's sloped away from the foundation walls. Again, we want to limit the amount of surface water that's allowed to get inside. If possible, we want to install a new French drain 
drain system around the perimeter of the foundation near the surface. It's not installed all the way down to the footings, but it's allowing any water that happens to get around the foundation to drain out before it has a chance to get inside. And then we want to cap the French drain with either impervious pavers or an impermeable soil cap, and that just directs water away from the foundation walls. It's not always possible, but this is preferable if you can't install a perimeter drain on the exterior footings. This is especially important in cold climates where we get freeze-thaw cycles, as we don't want water to freeze within the masonry walls and leave behind those salt deposits, since that can lead to efflorescence, subfluorescence, and spalling. Here we have a similar detail with our stone foundation. Again, we have that taped dimple mat membrane that's installed against the interior of the stone walls that gets drained over a new perimeter drain tile set in crushed stone and wrapped in filter fabric and drained to a series of sump pumps with backup batteries. We patch the excavated portion of the concrete slab and apply our epoxy vapor barrier over the surface of the slab to prevent moisture from wicking up and causing issues. Then we're sloping the grade away from those rubble foundation walls, providing those concrete pavers or an impervious soil cap to direct water away from the foundation and installing the French drain system to collect any water that happens to drain underneath here before it has a chance to reach the foundation. And we are draining that to daylight or to a dedicated on-site stormwater facility. For more information on waterproofing and insulating older existing buildings, head over to siri-designs.com where we have over 150 free building science articles that cover a wide range of topics and make sure to pick up a moisture management guide to residential remodels. This is really important stuff that everyone should know prior to starting any remodel or renovation project. For now, good luck with your projects. Cheers.